you think is this just not a sexy job? Or is it something that's just not kind of glamorized? I'm just saying, you. I mean, I, you can see Ugly Betty work in the fashion world. I don't see the animator show or something. I mean, I don't. I can't think of anything similar. You know what I mean on TV? But that my niece, who's like, she's in the anime right now. She's in the manga and stuff. But I don't know if there's any role model. You know what I mean right now? Actually, the funny thing is, is it's like the guys who really stand out are. Like I, I've worked in the industry now for over 20 years, and the, the guys that are usually really good at animation, like for some reason, are Brazilians and Canadians, because they're, they're into the into the into the medium and stuff. And then they try to, to be really good at what they do. And I, I think that's what what the big studios get um, attracted to is, is these people with with a passion to do really good work. Do you, I, I I I have not seen like the same. Actually, type of market, like say a Sex in the City, like someone say, oh, well, we got to make a Sex in the City comic book or a Sex in the City cartoon. I mean, for women, so I don't see. I mean, if they, if they, if you talk about any male comic book character, they everyone's talking about the shoes, the sneakers, the watches. You know, it just good bananas. You know what I mean and stuff. You know, well, women, it's like still like even when you had like um, just like characters like Xena, you know, warrior princess and stuff like that. You know, I know I think I did an animated version of thing, but it just takes a while, I guess. <laughs> boys this is a, a boys market like whether you're a teenager or you're 35 years old it's like when you do female characters the sex appeal of the, of the drawings attracts the boys if you do something that's all dudes and guns it attracts the boys so it's, it's very few and actually it's, it's growing you have a lot more fans as you can see there's a lot of, a lot of girls who like dressing up and coming to these things because uh, there's very few hillary clinton cartoons <laughs> yeah very yeah, but are you going to read a comic book about that? Like, yeah. like the media, it's like the same thing with animation. It's like we make films. Uh, like if we made an a animated Sex in the City, it's, it, it, there's no reason to do that. You could do it live action. So, and, and I question half the films I've even worked on because you're going to all, all tight and AE. Why, why animate that? It's like it's, it's practically a live action film. Anastasia, the same thing. Where do you see, do you ever see a situation where 2D will come back and be dominant? I mean, right now, is this, the, this is the Pixar. CGI press a button, you know, you know, Steve Jobs, another hit tomorrow, another hit tomorrow, you know what I mean? So, when do you see, do you ever see a situation where 2D can come back and start, like, wiping them out the mask, you know what I mean? Because we were talking before, like, this summer I was saying, like, I saw, I saw an ad for, you know, for space chimps, some 3D flies, and I'm like, okay, why am I watching 3D flies? I saw, like, I saw an animated maggot, I saw a CGI maggot, I'm like, do I want to see, a th have they run out of ideas that I have to watch a 3D fly, a 3D maggot saying, Daddy, come home from space? <laughs> well, I, I think what we're doing, like, I'm hoping it, it's not one or the other. Like, for me, animation is storytelling. So, like, for, uh, we're right now we're developing a, a series called The Croc Mind. Uh, it's uh, all these uh, animal characters which represent something. Um, and there's 32 of them. And, again, what we're trying to do is tell stories and inspire kids to make wise choices. Uh, like, sort of like what, what Disney used to do. But we're using 2D because that medium really lends itself for that product. I'm not. I'm a fan of, of CG. I love Pixar films and stuff. But when everyone just jumps on the same bandwagon, it, it all looks the same. And I think what we're doing, hopefully, is can be different and shows that, like, people still are interested in, in watching, like, what Disney used to do 50 years ago. What's What's the average CGI cost film compared to a 2D film? Is, is there anything that technology can do to come to kind of compete still, or is it what what cost wise? No, there's really no difference. Like one one of the reasons the jump to CG happen was they're saying well computer is so much cheaper than, than 2d films not true the average one when i was doing the the uh, uh, stuff for the big studios average cost of the films was still between 125 million to 150 million the average cost of a cg film is around that actually the bigger studios actually spend a heck of a lot more money uh so you're talking about 200 million plus plus you're talking between uh 50 and 100 million dollar uh marketing Expenses to make sure the film does is successful. I actually, I'm gonna wrap up here, but I mean, I actually on a lighter note, I was watching um, the uh, Wally's movie, and there was a contention of overweight people who was saying that the Wally movie was distorting the way that overweight people look in space after 40, uh, after 400 years. And do you ever get pressure groups and wonder? I mean, like even that to me, I was like, I didn't even know there was an overweight association.
that could have a fat person wobbling around and stuff. I mean, yeah. is there too much censorship when you see that going on? Or yeah, we? actually, we've dealt with that ourselves. It's like, no matter what, you're always going to have someone's offended at anything you do. You, if you go too far to the left, you have people saying it should be to the right, you go to the right, and they say it should be to the left, and you're never going to escape it. So what you need to do is, like if you're a storyteller, if you're a creator in any capacity, do what's true to you. Do what you believe in, and, and it'll work out. It's like, we, I've worked on film where they said, you can't say the word die, so they redub it to expire. And I go like, you know what, you can say what you have to say. As long as you have a good message, you're not corrupting anybody. Again, I'm not a, I'm not a big fan of potty humor myself. You mean like uh, Rogue's a super, I can't even pronounce it. I'm about to say Family Guy. I'm about to say the same wrong. I'm about to say Family Guy because that's the only thing that comes out here. You know? yeah. yes. See, see, that this is one of one of the things for me as well. Like, I'm a fan of animation of all sorts and stuff. But, like, I have a two-year-old daughter now, and her favorite film is Dumbo. Of all the CG films, her favorite is still Dumbo. Uh, but yeah, well, I think one of the problems in this country is still like everything that we do. Like, like there's there's all these issues like for me when you make films uh, like for adults and you say oh well we have the, the warnings and stuff and it's played late at night but the average age is still not adults watching these shows like I fear for my daughter and what she's going to be exposed to when she's like 10 years old well tell me something now I've talked to actually people at Disney because I actually I said why can't you give me the rights to put out Song of the South even after this after 40 years plus they still won't put out Song of the South because they are scared of pressure groups and I'm saying you've got the boondocks you've got South Park you've got so much stuff flying around why would you think that movie is still so powerful that it can't be released now on DVD and just fully promoted. See, it's, it's history, and that, that for me, it's like no matter what was, was the situation back then, that was history, and that was a benchmark film that, that Disney was based on. And and I, I get offended at stuff like that when they censor all these films. It's like, like, like for me, it's like when you look at films like like all the Warner Brothers stuff that we grew up with. Those are censored now. Where on the things it says not suitable for young children because they're violent and stuff. And and again, it's like all the old older stuff. Where I'm saying that was more pure storytelling. Like Warner Brothers is an exception, but all the old Disney stuff. Like when you have to put warnings on that. Now, no, I, something wrong. I, I just think it's I think it's a reaction to present uh, to to head off a quote unquote group. Like, you know, like if we put a warning or a sticker or we don't release it or cut back, then we're not going to get, nobody can give us a bad eye to make our stocks drop or nothing like that, you know what I mean? But if we want to do Family Guy and openly say, do whatever you want, you know, just go, go bananas, you know what I mean? You know, then that's great, you know what I mean? Because, because they're already saying we're trying to promote it anyway, you know. But Unfortunately, it's, it's such a fear to insult or offend that we end up censoring ourselves to the hill. It's like there's always going to be people that are offended. They're offended if you change it. They're offended if you keep it. So the thing is, like, be true to yourself. It's, it's like the, the monument from 9-11. I don't know if you heard that story when they did the, the monument of the, the firefighters raising the, the, the flag. And they changed the history to, well, we don't want to offend anybody, so we have to have one Hispanic, one black, one white. And people got offended because they're saying the history is there are three white guys, and then the, the other ones are complete. You're not going to have everyone happy. Everyone has to be represented in some way. Like that. Okay. Now, so say, is there a website for people to go to or look at some of the stuff, or where would they yeah. go for it? Uh, Crocpon.com, C-R-O-C-P-O-N-D. Dot com is where you can actually learn a bit about the uh, the franchise that we're uh, building right now. Fat Cat with a C, Fat Cat uh, Animation dot com, where you can learn more about our studio. And then I personally am going to have uh, LenSimon.com up pretty soon. So. Okay. And what should they look out for 2009, 2010? Because you got kind of got a couple of, three, maybe it's two years in advance. So what should they be looking out from your studio? No, actually, th this year is going to be great. We have, um, uh, for the Crockbond franchise, we actually uh, uh, released uh, last year Rind in the Puffer, which is about a puffer fish. Uh, we're uh, doing a uh, sponsoring an event with Christy Yamaguchi in Phoenix, Arizona uh, in October. The, the, the Dancing with the Stars winner. Yeah, the Dancing with the Stars, where we're introducing uh, Dex's Gem, which is our second crock on short. And then by the end of the year, uh, our third one, which is Babysitting Bulper, uh, should be out yeah, pretty, pretty, uh, 
January, December time. Yeah, so you're going to be pretty busy in this last yeah. month. So, okay. Well, I'm going to wrap here. we got to go back on the floor and keep working. I, even when I'm eating breaks, I'm still doing interviews and stuff. You know what I mean? Great. But that's what I'm trying to do. And you'll see this on Future X TV, Money Train, out. Peace.